Shalom, Michael here, Street Corner Ministry in Tour, Gilbert, Arizona. Uh, <clears throat> you know, the most wonderful thing is to understand where we're at in time and, and the things that I have understood and gathered within all the religious systems that I've been in. Uh, basically, everybody that is on the podium, uh, most of the podium people, leaders of their congregations, as they call themselves, are uh, lifting themselves up above, beyond and above, their so-called, uh, what they call the people that come, congregation. And so my understanding is, is that, you know, right now people have a hard time concentrating. Attention expand is like, uh, you know, I, I got some very uh, so-called wealthy people that, you know, like uh, YouTube shorts and that. And they give me these shorts and, and I've been, you know, watching the whole thing, uh, the pieces, cuts and pieces that they give me out of the videos, you know, since basically possibly 2010. Uh, 11 on and of course nowadays knowledge is really increasing and that's the wonderful thing and so I often get accused of what I do is you know they say all kinds of things about me that you know uh, unless the father draw them no one can come to to you know Yeshua so therefore they don't have to be out on the street corners or anything like that that the father's going to draw them well I don't understand what they really mean when you know Yeshua also says that some plant some sow some water Yudavave gives the increase or the parable of the seeds or anything you know it's basically everything you need to know is in the biblical text but I also come against how they interpret things as maybe we really don't know what the interpretation is because we wasn't there for one, and we know that Mother Mary didn't speak English. And we're at the point in time where, yeah, you can check out the Hebrew and the Greek, and you know, the Hebrew's where it's at, believe me when I tell you. But again, we wasn't there. And so, you know, Yeshua said he's the bread of life. Uh, he's the living water. He is the, the comforter, the spirit of the truth. And uh, it, when it comes, you'll know all things. So in the Shabbat, he's our Shabbat, right? He's our Sabbath. So what does that mean? And basically, if the deeper understanding is, is to hear his voice. You know, Moses had uh, a family of understanding since the Garden of Eden. But for some reason, when he went to search, uh, he searched on the mountain and uh, the burning bush and all that came about. And then the finger of Yod of Arvei wrote the, the Torah. Uh, some say the 10 words or whatever. Whatever that might mean and whatever that is, uh, Moses also broke the first ones and then went up again on a 40 day fast. And uh, Yod of Arvei is clear in the text, so it is translated. He wrote a copy and then he said now Moses you're going to write a copy so when Moses wrote a copy the second time he came down and his face shone so the Hebrew text is you know Quran is the word and that means Moses had horns and if you ask the religious system of the day Michael you know what is the word Quran and that Moses had and they go luminous Moses's face was luminous and I said, well, what's the word for the horns on the altar? And they say, Michael, Koran. And I say, well, then Moses had horns. And the first time it's used, and they go, no, Michael, it, it's not Koran. It's like, you know, it's like when you walk outside and you tell somebody, hey, the temperature is cool, and we better get a jacket on. And then when we walk into a, a congregation and look at somebody and uh, that is dressed nicely or whatever and say, man, you got some cool clothes on, you know what I mean? 
So that's how they justify the horns on the altar versus Moses' face being luminous or showing light, uh, gleaming or whatever, and had to put a veil over it. But the root of the word is still Quran. Where am I going with this? So I'm trying to help people understand that we, again, are, I do believe, beyond a shadow of a doubt. Let me clearly explain this. Beyond the shadow of a doubt, the Bible, whatever Bible you like to read or read, whether it be English, 113 different, maybe more now, uh, translations, whether it be uh, uh, whatever language you learn, whether it be the actual Hebrew, the Paleo-Hebrew, the Greek, uh, Latin, whatever it is, we still have to, it is all spiritual food. It is definitely spiritual food. It is good. But when that comforter comes and the truth hits you, you start digging in deeper and deeper and deeper. And, and uh, you know, it's kind of like uh, everybody looks at you like uh, King Agrippus. I'm not for sure if that's the one, but uh, told Paul that, you know, through the study of scriptures has made you mad, Paul. You've gone crazy. So that's kind of what I'm accused of is being crazy. Uh, because I dig in deep and, and uh, can translate and, and do all kinds of searches or whatever, and Yeshua's redeemed me from the ways of the world. I'm not a brick builder. Uh, so I'm considered, you know, crazy. <clears throat> so the start of the story is, is that they're saying that, you know, the scribe, Yeshua said, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you know. And then they jump to the verse where it says he desires mercy. Well, maybe the scribes and Pharisees that Yeshua was talking about is in today's language, you know, Mr. King James himself or Mrs. Queen of England's son, King James himself or Tyndale or NIV or Cessars or Matthew Henry or uh, we got uh, we do have the Aleph Tav scriptures. It's funny that they put the Aleph Tav in there, but that, not too many other Hebrew words. We have the complete Jewish Bible by David Stern, and it gives the Hebrew words, uh, Hebrew names, but it's basically in English. But it is a, it's a good place to start, you know. If you want to learn uh, the Bible, you should learn it from a Jew, for goodness sakes, you know, especially a redeemed Jew. But when you get a hunger and a thirst to learn Hebrew, that's when it all starts. But the basis of all this is that I see every congregation in, that I've run across, so-called in the believing system of the Bible, there is not one building that I've run across that resembles the tabernacle in the wilderness where Hashem dwelled, Solomon's temple where Hashem dwelled, uh, Herodias's, Herod's, whatever temple that there is, there's not one that is there other than the one that is in uh, around Jerusalem somewhere. They built a, a t tabernacle in the wilderness. And uh, it is still standing to this day. They, they, of course, they duplicated it, and it's still there. You can go to this very moment. Uh, no Ark of the Covenant, I don't think, unless it's, uh, you know, it might be, might be similar to the Ark in there. But I know the tent's up. And then the New Jerusalem is clear what the temple and what the New Jerusalem is going to be like. I don't see that anywhere either. Until it comes, that is. And the next thing is Yeshua said, we are the temple. We don't need a building to go to, uh, to find the presence of Yudavav who is Yeshua. Uh, Elo Yudavav Elohim, who is Yeshua. So... I look at everywhere that I go, and I'm basically not liked by almost none of them uh, because of my, we all need to help one another in our walk with Yeshua. So what my understanding is that Yeshua did, he lived, slept, and ate with his disciples. And then he told them, go make Shalakim, sent ones, disciples. So you can't make a disciple by a few hours on a Shabbat or a Bible study during the week, and then send them right out into the brick building system or to the retirement of the house. Everybody's sitting around doing nothing, uh, more so than doing anything, trying to get out into the world to make it a better place. 
And if they are trying to make it a better place, they do it for an evil system. An unjust evil system at that. So, <coughs> hey, yeah. Brukata, thank you for that, Yeshua. So, my point being is, is that because I'm out on the street corner and watching the people go by and people come to me and, and all kinds of people stop by and all kinds of people thank me and say, keep up the good work, you know, keep going, whatever. Uh, I love what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing. I get a lot of compliments, not from everybody, but more than you would think. It, it actually strengthens me to do what I got to do, even though a lot of people walk by and don't say nothing. But the very few that do walk by, almost every day that I do something uh, for Yeshua and, and the gift that he's given me, uh, people thank me for it. So I don't need no so-called, whatever it is, congregation leader to give me a pat on the back and say, Oh, Michael, you're doing so much wonderful work. Let us support you. Because I don't get along with him. Uh, because I see right through him what the Bible is telling us to do, and what they're so-called jumping around from place to place trying to get the people to think there's somebody that interprets for them, uh, and they'll get this good message so they can you know, fill their bellies afterwards with uh, all kinds of secular food. Uh, I, I don't get along very good with them, and there's no support from any of these people. Uh, some of the people inside the place support every now and then. Hallelujah for that. I tell them it's treasure in heaven. So I just wanted to state clearly that on the outside of the camp, the camp being inside the so-called religious system where most people think that they go to get the divine message or hear from God or whatever, that we're the temple. And so you need to be hearing these voices. And, you know, you can use the biblical text for alignment to see if it's lining up with his actual word as the word is written as it is. Uh, but there's also depot. You know, he makes his angels uh, messengers, as it's called, the winds. And so uh, there's plenty of voices out there, but they should be at least telling you to do good. And you can't go wrong by doing good. Love with him and love your neighbor. If that ain't functional, uh, that love is to help each other in the walk. I don't know what it is. But on the outside, there's a guy named Ray who came up to me, and, uh, you know, he's learning. I got him into the Bible. He very much studies the government like uh, and what's going on in the world like I do the biblical text. So anyway, he came by and he gave me something, and then I left, and uh, he sent me the link. And I left. I listened to it a little bit, and then I just left and went to Prescott. So when I got to Prescott, I was basically fairly busy that it took me a long time to get uh, to watch what he gave me but when I did I was totally impressed even though I didn't think it was complete and there was one through five videos to watch and uh, they're all one to two hours or three hours a piece but when I got back to I did give it to a couple of people and I did listen to it quite a few times all five of them and when I got back into the valley, uh, a Texas seminar came up, which was a couple weeks old on the video. And uh, I will say, here it is. Uh, hopefully you can see it. It's going to be too dark. i got to it, darken it down. Let me see here. Pull my tools out of my... my uh, Hopefully you can see that. I'm always like bouncing around here. Huh? And then I'll roll up here. And there you can see uh, hopefully focus. Maybe I can tone it down just one more time. I'll go like this. 
Ó. David Strait, live from Texas. That's four. There he is down there. Uh, that's what, two or three? That's three. Anyway, I just listened to the first one. And they're all in a row here. This is a good one. Uh, and you got to take... How do I want to say it? Just, you know, go to the quantum angle. Uh, this is funny, huh? And, you know, you'll find it. David Strait. People, the only thing I can say is that it's so worth it to find out. He brings up some wonderful information. It's a lot to chew on. You got to take the meat and the vegetables. You got to throw out the bone and you got to throw out the chaff. But I'm telling you, there's plenty of meat and vegetables there. Perhaps even manna from heaven. And this guy's knowledge, 35 years as a lawyer. He also knows about the silvers for the redemption of your souls. He don't tell you that, but he does tell you that it is uh, a cleansing for your, your, your temple. And uh, so he's very knowledgeable. They also have a, a bio shield uh, thing to get rid of the EMFs and everything that they're trying to do to us uh, through 5G technology and above. It's been going on for thousands of years or hundreds of years or whatever, uh, at least since the 40s anyway, and they've about mastered it. Because I go out into the world and I see people changing right in front of my eyes. Uh, to me, this is amazing. People in my lifetime changing uh, right in front of my eyes. And so there has to be something going on. So we are eating the food and drinking the water. Uh, you know, uh, Woodward TV said there was a some kind of chemical plant that blew up somewhere or whatever caught on fire. He's saying it's because of uh, his study shows that it was potassium something that they put in the water, potassium being salt, but some uh, uh, atomic change or uh, of, of the salt to where they call it something like potassium chloride, potassium hydroxide, all these things. But one of them they put in the water to get rid of the so-called bacteria in it, uh, I think he said, or parasites, in the drinking water. But the sun flare uh, from the sun tripped into possibly an electromagnetic field lighting these chemicals on creating an explosion and getting them on fire. And uh, they're not telling you that. They're telling you that it was, you know, uh, whatever. They're not really giving you a thing. Another thing is uh, somebody said that they actually heard it. I didn't hear it, but uh, he mentions it. The Woodward TV guy uh, says that, you know, the whole airport system shut down because their control thing of artificial control computers, the automatic pilot or whatever, uh, had a malfunction. And they just, they didn't tell you why it malfunctioned, but he's saying that it malfunctioned because of the sun flare. And what he's saying is, which lines up with Planet X guy and Planet 7X guy and Wormwood and the end times and 2023 coming up, we might be able to see it, uh, is that, you know, this planet is getting nearer. And that's what causes the sun to magnetically surge, burst, whatever they call it, flare. And uh, cause the building with, Yeshua says we're the salt of the earth, but it caused this building that had a salt product 
in it for drinking water to catch on fire. So it's really a time to wake up. I suggest you do the David Strait. Uh, part one is more than you can chew. He explains a lot of things about who you are. But part part one, I should say. Part two will give you the bio shield right off the bat uh, where they kind of do a little skit and prove uh, with just people out of the audience, you know. But he's an amazing guy. Uh, one man to know all this, whether they're, you know, religious or whatever, I could care less. He has lots of knowledge, more knowledge than me and you could ever do in our lifetime that he's figured out being a lawyer and now uh, advancing that lawyer into biblical and constitution and man-made law to basically find out that we are slaves under an evil system and there's a way to get out of it. And I think that's most wonderful. Yeshua said, make yourselves friends with the wealth of iniquity, for when it runs out, you'll have places to go. Now, I've come across many scholars in my life, well, in the last 18 years, that I've asked about that verse. And there are so many this and that, or so whatever. And I believe with all my heart that most of the people I ask are still part of the evil system. That's why they're not really doing what the Bible says. They act like it but they're really not. They could care less. It's all about them, mostly, and uh, getting their fleshly desires and consuming their fleshly desires. But I believe that David Strait, even though he don't bring up that Bible verse as of yet, I watched all but, uh, I watched all the Utah seminars, one through five, and I watched most of the Texas seminars. Maybe I haven't completed three yet. But uh, I didn't hear him say anything like that, make yourselves friends with the wealth of iniquity. So when it runs out, you'll have places to go. But I clearly believe my understanding is that's what Yeshua is talking about. And this guy is bringing it forth on how to do that. And so because, you know, I, I always used to say, you know, what do you mean? Make yourself friends with the walk of evil? Like I'm supposed to join this church or something? And one day they kick me out, and then all of a sudden one day they're going to say, Oh, Michael, you were right, and walk me back into their house of idolatry. Can't be what Yeshua's meaning. And people say, Well, it's just, you know, it's Judah, it's Israel. You know, you got to, before you have out with your brother, you know, everybody, all the Christians think Jews killed Jesus, and, you know, he laid his life down freely, but, uh, you know, you got to you gotta lay your gift down at the altar and then go make friends with Judah, Yehuda, Israel and uh, forgive them and then come back and bring your gift and that's not a bad thing you know but i don't have a problem with israel or the jews I, i've always loved them with all my heart those are the ones that gave me or perhaps i'm part of that bloodline i i, I don't know you know uh but i i've always had a compassion for them and and i've always to this day I, I i respect them and love them very much and understand them and i know the biblical text that they're blinded for a reason so I try not to do that blame game on the chosen people. And when you understand what I know, Yeshua said, Woe to you, you know, uh, he scribes and Pharisees, those who say they're Jews or not, don't tell me you're children of Abraham or you'd be doing what Abraham done. So obviously you have to be born again. But obviously in there, there's some deeper things that it's not all the blame game. It's all about the love and uh, the resurrection attitude when he came back. He didn't give anybody any a mouth. He just said, this is what I want you to do. And he proved his, his strength and his life eternal. Hallelujah. And with that, you can't beat the life eternal. So build your treasure in heaven. Listen to David's straight video, uh, in Texas especially. There's going to be more information than the Utah one. And with all that, I hope you learn and end start action before the Mashiach comes, before the thousand year millennial, uh, you realize that you're, make yourselves friends of the walk of iniquity is coming against this so-called corporate system we have and start proclaiming our image of the creator in the Bible and the image of the creator in the constitution as 
our inheritance and we will be set free uh, my friends it's been it's time to, to wake up but then all that may Yudhava Baruch bless you and may Yeshua fill your everlasting hearts and uh, you know I hope that Yeshua himself opens your ears sends a comforter and opens your ears hallelujah your eyes and your hearts to perceive and give you strength to carry forth don't worry about this brick building system it's all coming down in Yeshua's name, Amen and Amen. Shalom.